Hi, Tamal. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Now, this week's column was very interesting because it discussed the HR issues at bank, which are rarely discussed. Now, the point you mentioned, which caught my attention, was that the subordinate to officer ratio or clerk to officer ratio is shrinking. What is the reason for this? I mean, it's fairly simple, you know. Uh, it's uh, it's happening in particularly in the public sector banks. And if you see historically, public sector banks uh, clerk to officer ratio is very very high. About a decade back, or more than a decade back, uh, former uh, uh, Bank of Baroda chairman Mr. Khandelwal came out with a report on the HR issues. There he mentioned that that once you have the CBS, the core banking solution. Uh, you need to look at this, do you keep so many clerks? And that's happening as technology progresses, you know, uh, because the clerical jobs are like tailor jobs, uh, interacting with uh, customers, uh, selling stuff. As you change the way banking is done, um, so they are they're becoming redundant. So what's happening is uh, uh, public sector banks, they're not going for VRS or asking people to quit but um, they are not filling in the vacancies. The fact that you mentioned public sector banks, have bank mergers also contributed to the shrinkage? Not exactly, not exactly. Uh, because um, again, uh, a part of the bank merger, I mean, it, it is not uh, uh, sacking people or rationalizing workforce um, in a polite way. It was not part of the check. So we have been affected. And one thing we must remember, that in public sector banks, up to a certain point, at the lower level, they are better paid than their private. Uh, so it, the disparity is very high at the, at the most senior level, even the uh, tier two level, but from junior to middle and between middle and senior level, uh, public sector bankers are far better off than their private. Now, you highlight that fintechs, new banks, other tech firms are poaching away employees. Does that mean that banks need to change the incentive structures for employees? So, uh, yeah, that was the, you can call it philosophical request uh, I indulged in um, in my column. And there are multiple ways people are leaving. Of course, uh, the uh, other banks also are poaching. That's one part of it. And then the, all the challenger banks, new banks fintechs, tech firms, and even some of them are uh, setting up their own startups. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how do you retain them? And um, I have spoken to the CEOs of uh, private sector banks, uh, large listed private banks who have been facing this. And I see uh, different answers. Uh, like for instance, uh, um, one gentleman says that it's, it's usual, nothing to be worried about. We need to have an inclusive approach. Okay. Yet another person says that, um, look, we probably need to go for, as you are saying, that um, uh, mid-year salary hike. But another person gives it throws a very interesting light. He said, look, money will not uh, retain them because this generation, the millennials, are a very different lot. You know, the inner e ecosystem has changed. And uh, so you need to cater to that need of them. Mm -hmm. You need to continuously, continuously challenge them. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so that that is it's a culture change. What can public sector banks do in this case? They are bound by different rules than private sector banks. Most of their examples are from private banks, I believe. So what is the issue for public sector banks in this scenario? Uh, certainly, it's a very very relevant question. Uh, like the stock options. Uh, which have been at least two banks, I know Bank of Baroda and State Bank of India, they've been getting dust, dusted, I mean, lying lying and accumulating dust in finance ministries, uh, some cabinet. Uh, banks are not allowed to give uh, any kind of, uh, those kind of incentives. Uh, well, the, the CEO and the uh, MD, CEO MD and uh, uh, the executive directors, you know, they get some, Piddly bonus, uh, I think it's eight lakh and six lakh kind of thing. That's the kind of money they get. Uh, but <laughs> so you can't attract talent. So the one way of doing it is uh, recruiting from the market, which banks have done. Taking you a bit off topic because this was the news of the week. There's a thirty-three percent premium that the government is commanding over IDBI banks' valuation. Is that justified? 
Well, it's very difficult to say from an investor's point of view in the in the stock market sense, is it justified or not? But if you see, uh, I would say almost every public sector bank, uh, there's a great franchise. As we speak, uh, IDBI uh, is uh, is uh, performing reasonably better. Um, it's yes, it's it has a huge pile of gross bad assets, uh, but if you look at the net non-performing assets, it's it's pretty low in sync with the industry, which means um, it has done massive provisioning. Um, incidentally, it's uh, it's CASA, uh, you know, current and savings account, which is relatively low cost, is the highest in Indian banking system, if I'm not mistaken. So it's a it's a very good franchise, and as I understand uh, the precondition of privatization is the government will follow a hands-on policy. Mm -hmm. Both the government and the government agent, if I may say so, LIC will not interfere in any which way. So I think any entity which is looking for a banking license in India, it's a huge market. If you see that, that kind of franchise, um, I think 33% uh, is not something it's, it's very high it's asking for. It has the potential. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your time. We hope to see you again next week. Thank you. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn. I am the blue of the limitless sky. I am the inspiration that lets success so high. I will achieve. Nation's trusted bank, SBI, the banker to every Indian.